Hello everyone, my name is David and I am a co-founder and chief product officer at Import Classes. In this short video lesson, we will be looking at a few core computer science concepts, which will serve as a basis for our introduction to data science course later on. Once we understand what the computer does under the hood, it will be much easier to execute data science tasks effectively. So, in the next few minutes, we will be looking at what we actually mean by a computer program. What are the components in your computer that are involved when executing data science tasks? What is a programming language? And how does the computer interact with programming languages such as Python? To begin with, a computer program is really just a list of instructions. Think of it as a recipe. First, we could say that we add 200 grams of fresh chicken, then add 50 milliliters of water, and finally some salt. In the world of computer programming, we could say something like, make sure the user entered a valid email address. Then, if the email address is valid, store it, and finally display a thank you note. Computer programs are in practice often much more complex. But when we refer to coding or programming, we really just talk about the creation of such instructions. To make sure that the computer understands what we want it to do, we write our instructions in a programming language. So when we work on a variety of data science tasks, there are several components in our computers that will play an important role. We have the CPU here on the left, RAM or random access memory, hard disks, and graphics cards. So let's look at the CPU first. We also sometimes call it the computer's brain. The CPU knows how to execute our computer programs. As you may know from different computer science jokes, it pretty much just works with ones and zeros. These days, CPUs often have multiple cores. Think of it as having multiple processors on a single processor. Well, this might sound pretty confusing at first, but it describes an interesting idea. It allows us to execute data science calculations in parallel, which in turn reduces the time a processor spends calculating our results and makes us more productive. As mentioned, the CPU pretty much only understands ones and zeros. Now, imagine you want to program your computer and you have to write the instructions as it's shown on this slide. Looks pr pretty terrible, doesn't it? There's no way we want to write our computer programs in ones and zeros. So, over time, computer scientists and programmers have come up with many different programming languages. What you see on this slide is a piece of Python code. It does look much nicer than the ones and zeros we had on the previous slide, right? Well, even without any programming experience, I'm sure you can read the Python code. You might not directly understand what this piece of code does, but at least it looks somehow close to a human language. Effectively, this is how we want to write computer programs. We don't want to worry about ones and zeros and the details of our CPU. We want to focus on what's most important, and that is executing our data science tasks and produce meaningful results in the most effective manner possible. We want to keep things simple. Programming languages such as Python, which are easy to read, are called high-level programming languages. Other examples of high-level programming languages are Java, Ruby, or JavaScript. The problem we have is that the computer does not directly understand any of these high-level programming languages. It wouldn't know how to execute your Python code, for example. This is why we need to translate this code back into something called a low-level programming language. In the end, we have to give zeros and ones to the CPU, as we discussed before. When we translate one programming language into another, we speak of compilation. A compiler allows us to write our computer programs in a high-level programming language, and to translate it into a low-level programming language, such as assembly or binary code. So far, so good. Now that we have an idea of what the CPU does, let's actually look at a few other components that are used in data science tasks. RAM or random access memory and hard disks are two ways to store data and remember it for later. Have you ever noticed that when you open a high-resolution photo on your computer at first, that it takes much longer to open? The second time you open the photo, it then almost appears instantly. Well, what's going on here? All your photos 
are usually stored on a hard disk. When you open the photo for the first time, it is copied to your RAM. This happens because RAM is a very fast way to read and store data. It often cannot hold as much data as a hard disk, but it provides much faster access. We also say that random access memory is volatile, which means that when you turn your computer off, the information stored in RAM is lost. That's why we also call it short-term memory. Hard disks, on the other hand, can usually store much more data, but provide slower access. The good thing about hard disks is that your data is not lost when you turn your computer off. That's why we also sometimes refer to it as long-term memory. When you analyze data, you will often perform many, many calculations. This is why a computer holds the data that you currently use in RAM. Once you're done, you can decide to write your results to your hard disk to make it persistent. Traditionally, graphics cards have been responsible for generating output on your computer display. For example, it displays this video lesson on your computer screen right now. In recent years, however, GPUs or graphics processing units, which are little electronic circuits on your graphics card, have been used to massively parallelize machine learning and data science computations. Using GPUs, you can increase computational performance by several orders of magnitude. This idea has made data scientists and machine learning engineers much more productive at work. So I really hope that you enjoyed this short video lesson on a few basic computer science concepts. There's so much more to explore, so if you want to learn more about some of the things that I mentioned here, check out the links at the bottom of this slide. And of course, if you have any questions or comments on the material in this lesson, feel free to contact me directly at david at importclasses.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Until next time, this is David from Import Classes.